Very good. So what we're trying to get at is the following. When we say investment, okay, investment is physical investment, new machines, new factories, okay, plus changes in inventories, okay. <coughs> These two things are separate but we measure them under the same heading, okay? And that's GDP by expenditure. Next up is GDP by income. Now here we were saying, asking the question, what happens to our production, okay? How do we use it? Next we're asking the dual question, which is, if we produced, the production must have generated income, okay? Who got the income? Let's add, up, let's add the incomes up and get to the value of the production. <coughs> this functional distribution is something very useful to know. Okay? Here's what we're asking. Let's say somebody, the gentleman in the blue shirt has a factory. What are you producing? What? Water. Okay. This is a good one, actually. It suits me fine. You're producing water, okay? Now, what do you need? How do you do production? Okay. So you need machines. That's easier. What else? <laughs> okay, this is the easy question, right? One, I'm going to assume you need water, right? It tends to come out of the ground somewhere, right? And you tend not to own the place, right? So you have to rent the water source, right? Okay. What else? Are you going to do the work yourself? All right. So you're going to hire people, okay? What else? You probably need machinery. Otherwise, a day may for Muslims. Right? You don't want to produce water and tell people, ah, yeah, you know, my hand goes all over the place and my feet goes all over the place, right? It's just, okay, you need machinery. Okay? Do you have the money to buy the machinery? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to borrow. Okay? And this is something important. Right. You need the land to do production on, and you have to rent it, and you have to pay rents for that. You need people to work for you, and you need to hire those people, and you have to pay them wages. You need machinery, okay? and you have to buy the machinery, and you have to borrow to buy the machinery. Okay? What do you bring? What do you do? You have the idea, okay? And you take the risk, and you get the reward for that, right? And this is exactly what we're going to ask. We're going to ask, once the water is produced, okay, the value of that water must go a little bit to the guy who owns the land, right? You're paying him. A little bit to the people who do the production, your workers, okay? How much does she get? A little bit to the people who lend to you so that you could do the production. You're going to pay interest on your borrowing. And the rest is going to be your profit. Okay? What is the distribution? So, you produced 100 liras worth of water. Okay? <coughs> this is your GDP contribution. Let's say this is the only thing that we produced. So Y is 100. Okay? Are you paying rent? Yes. Right. Sure. How much rent did you pay? Out of a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> G 
give me a hand here, okay? Let's say rent is 15, okay? You borrow from the bank, and you have to pay the bank with interest, okay? <coughs> you borrow 20, you pay, say, 25 back, okay? The net payment that you're making, right? This is very bad usage of the word net, but you understand. The, what, comes out actually, what, what actually comes out of your pocket is five, the interest payment, right? You pay five as interest, 15 as rent, five as interest, okay? And then these three girls work for you, okay? How much wages do you get? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so total wages is 60 for the three of them, right? <coughs> 15 is rent. 5 is interest. 60 are wages. Value of total production is 100. How much is your profit? Add these up. 15, 5, 60, 20. What do you get? <coughs> Very good. Impressive mathematical abilities. Is it a coincidence that this is 100 and this is 100? No. no. <coughs> Why not? That's because of the way we calculate profits. Okay? Profits are the residual. We look at the value and say once we take out everything that we pay, the rest is profits. This could be negative too, right? If she had said not 20, but 30, then this would be what? Minus 10, okay? It would still be 100, and you'd be bankrupt. So this is the easiest taught by example, and this is the example, right? You understand that this is the case for every single company, every single productive process, right? The value of the production goes to rent, interest, wages, and profit. Thus, if I add up, all of the rents, all of the interest, all of the wages, and all of the profits in the economy, I'm going to come up with the GDP. That was the whole point. <coughs> this is called GDP by income, and you can find these numbers too. Okay? <coughs> Are these two the same? They should be, but they aren't. Okay? Why? Because well, we have measurement difficulties, okay? You go out and ask people, or try to come up with a measure of how much did you consume, how much did you invest, blah, blah, you add those up, okay? Then you go and ask, what was the rent income? What was the interest income? What was the wage income? What was the profit income? You add those up, okay? In general, theoretically, if you are able to correctly measure these, they must be the same. But because we are not able to correctly measure them, there is always a discrepancy. And the Statistical Institute reports what that discrepancy is. Okay? <coughs> In Turkey, and you should do this, go to the TUIX webpage, look at the production numbers, okay? Milli hesaplar. It's going to ask you do you want to see GDP by expenditure or do you want to see GDP by income? Okay? And it's going to tell you. Here is the bottom line number. It's going to report the same number. In one of them, there's going to be an additional item that says statistical discrepancy. It says success hata. Why is that number there? Unless you put it there, these two won't be the same. Okay? But it's not a, um, it's not a conceptual problem. It's a measurement problem. Conceptually, we understand exactly what we're doing. These two things have to be the same. Okay? And this is something very useful. Right? When you look at, for example, over time, what is happening to the wage component of the GDP? Proportionately, is this going up or down? I bet you learned something. Okay? Good, very useful. The last bit is the value added. This is the one that is impossible to measure, but is the most conceptually useful one. Okay? Value added says, remember that we were looking at the total monetary value of final goods and services? Right? We could do one of two things. Either we take the final goods and services and their prices, or we could ask, look, I'm looking at a bread valued at one lira. 
okay? The GDP contribution is one. But I know that I'm actually looking at the production of wheat, the conversion of wheat into flour, the conversion of flour into bread, okay? How much of that one comes from each step of this production? Is the really valuable part production of the wheat? Or taking the wheat and turning it into flour? Or taking the flour and turning it into bread? This is a good question, OK? So we could do this. <coughs> we could say, let's look at the value of the wheat that is produced, OK? We're going to assume wheat is produced out of nothing. Some guy comes and says, you know, let there be wheat, and then there's wheat. And this thing, say, costs 15 krush. OK? And then, this isn't very good. I should make better use of the board. This is the value, OK? The value of the wheat is 15 krush. The value of the flour is, say, 50 krush. And the value of the bread is 1. OK? This is the final good. This is the price of the final good. This is the GDP contribution. Now, when you look at this, can you tell me which step is the most valuable step? Bread, right? How do you know? You did the value added calculation, OK? You said, let's look at the value added. How much is the increase in the value of this thing in this step? What is it here? 0 0.15. Why? Because we produce out of nothing, OK? What is it here? 0 0.35. I got something that was valued at 0 0.15, turned it into something valued at 0 0.5. What is it here? 0 0.5, okay? I got something that's valued at 0.5, turn it into something valued at 1. Here's the magic. Add these up. What do you get? Ooh, isn't that cool? Is it a coincidence that this is 1 and this is 1? What I have done here is I, I broke down the value components of the bread, okay? The value components have to add up to the total value, OK? This is the value added way. This is what says, look, the real productive, the, the real valuable step in the bread production is not the production. By the way, I don't know this, right? I'm, I'm making up the numbers. But these numbers say the real valuable contribution in the bread production is not the production of the wheat, OK? It is not the production of the flour either. It's actually taking the flour and turning it into bread. Now, this is useful for the following reason. Does anyone know what value added is in Turkish? Katmader. In fact, you pay a tax over this. That's exactly what Katmader Vergisi is. In English, this is called value added tax, VAT. OK? It says, I'm going to produce this over its contribution, over this bit. I'm going to produce the flour here. I'm going, to, I'm going to tax the flour for 0.35. I'm going to tax the bread for 0 0.05. OK? Now, and when we talk about fiscal policy, we're going to talk in detail about this way of taxation. Think of the production of. Uh, I don't know, machine made of steel, okay, made of iron. Is it the extraction of the iron from the earth? The production of the iron itself, that is a valuable step? Or taking that iron and turning it into a machine? This isn't hard, right? You should have some feeling of this. Look, you hear this often in Turkish. 
Ham madde ihraç ediyoruz. Yüksek katma değerli malları ithal ediyoruz. You must have heard this by this age, like a million times. Okay? This is what that's referring to. It says, we're exporting the wheat, we're buying the bread. Okay? So the big GDP contribution accrues to somebody else's GDP. Somebody else puts in the large value added. Okay? Now, if you understand this, this has very useful policy implications, right? Say you're gonna, as the government, you want to give subsidies to some people. Would you rather subsidize and encourage wheat production or bread production? Okay, that's that kind of thinking. We're gonna say, if, if, I'm, if I'm choosing between, I'm gonna produce wheat and I'm gonna produce too much of it and I'm gonna export the rest, versus I'm gonna produce bread Perhaps more bread than I have wheat for, and I'm going to import wheat. Which one is better? Produce the bread, import the wheat, because this is the high value added component. Okay? This obviously abstracts from all of these, you know, dünyada kendi kendine yeten yedi ülke çarçurt. You guys know this, right? Does anyone know one more of the other six countries? I grew up with this, we are one of the seven countries that is self-sufficient in food production stuff. Nobody ever told me what the other six are. Maybe. Do you know this? Are you making it up? Do you know this? Are you making it up? Okay. I'm fairly sure the whole list is a big lie, but I'm not going to argue on this. Okay? This is GDP where value added. So now you understand. I could either say, ah, one bread is consumed, goes into the GDP, okay? GDP by expenditure. 100, a value 100 of bread is produced, and I know that 15 is for the rent, 5 is for the interest, 60 is for the wages, 20 is for the profit, that's once again 100. Okay? That's by income. Or I could say, I'm going to look at the production chain. I'm going to add up the components that make up a bread. Okay? That's going to give me the same answer as well. So this is how GDP by expenditure and GDP by income are how we calculate the GDP. Value added is how we think of it. Okay? Very good. Now, It must be very clear to you that this is something extremely simple. Right? Once you understand what the definition is, you should be able to come up with the right answer to everything. Okay? So your, your homework question asks you to think about these things a little bit. Right? It asks, for example, let me give you a hand. Let's say I have this. Okay? And I've been carrying this in my pocket for a while now. I sell it to you. And we record the transaction. One board marker sold for five liras, okay? And you should never pay five liras for a board marker. What is the GDP contribution? I already had this, okay? The fact that it changed owners means nothing. Did we produce this? No, what is the GDP contribution? Zero, okay? This is something important. What if I sell my house or buy a new house? It depends on whether the house is built this year or whether I'm selling something or buying something that was built earlier, okay? As long as you keep in your mind we're trying to measure the value of production this year, you will never do anything wrong with GDP, okay? We're not trying to measure sales. Right? That's the key. We're trying to measure production. That's the inventory bit. Okay? Good. <coughs> These will all give us measures of the nominal GDP. Okay? You should know by now how you convert a nominal GDP into real GDP. Okay? And you know that real GDP requires a base here. 
why? Why do I need to choose a base for real GDP? Yes. Yes. What does the base here do? Has anyone looked at the homework yet? Did you? You should. So your homework asks you to find the nominal real GDP numbers and t plot them and take a look at them, okay? To do that, you could do one of two things. One is you can get the nominal GDP numbers, you can get the price series and convert the nominal GDP into real GDP yourself. Or you can find the real GDP numbers because they are reported as well. But then I will ask you, what you're showing me is real GDP with which year's prices? Can you calculate real GDP with 2009 prices? Can you? Yes. How about 2004 prices? Sure. That's why you have to pick the base here, right? Which year are we looking at? Would it make a difference? This is your homework. It does make a difference. Okay? The numbers that I give you in your homework, right, there's this little table that says you produce the three goods. Uh huh. Uh, okay, so this is going to be an important part of the lecture. So, your homework country, Kyrgyzstan, has three goods. <coughs> right? Arnochiri, Esme, and Lakerda. Now, I gave this homework the first semester I came to Bilkent. And the class had this one important, urgent question. What is Lakerda? And I was devastated. Öğrenecek çok şeyiniz var arkadaşlar. <gülüyor> Balık görmüşsünüzdür. <gülüyor> Palamut çok kıymetli bir balığımızdır ve kışın ilk önce ortaya çıkan balıklardan bir tanesidir. Bu Palamut büyüdüğü zaman adı değişir. Palamut'un bir büyüğüne ne deniyor? <gülüyor> Yazık günah ya. Şu yaşa gelmişsiniz. Torik. Bu Torik'te de alırsın. Böyle dinlersin güzel güzel. İyice yıkarsın. İçini temizlemek önemlidir. Ondan sonra kaya tuzunu koyarsın böyle bir küpün içine. Üstüne torik koyarsın. Yine tuz koyarsın. Yine torik koyarsın. Tuzun içine bekletirsin bunu. Salamuru olur. Yeterince bekleyip doğru düzgün bir iş yaptıysan çıktığı zaman harika bir marine balık elde etmiş olursun. Bu zımbırtının adı Lakerda'dır. Teşekkür ederim. Hangi durumlarda son derece zevkle yeneceğini size arz etmeme gerek olmadığını zannediyorum. <gülüyor> Very good. Um, so, your homework says, look, you have the quantities and the prices for both years. Okay? Use the first year, calculate the nominal GDPs, calculate the real GDPs using the first year's prices, and calculate the real GDPs using the second year's prices, and look at the growth rates. Okay? Do you expect to find the same real GDP growth rate with the, with the two different base years? There is no reason why they have to be the same, okay? And you're going to find that they are different. And I want you to think of why they are different, okay? And that question's numbers are not just made up numbers. Seynoja and I thought a lot about those numbers and, and said, you know, look, I'm not going to give away the question altogether. But the answers turn out to be surprisingly different. And you should think about why they are different, okay? Now, here's what we could do. We said we have prices in the first year, quantities in the first year, prices in the second year, quantities in the second year. And we said I could look at this, I could also do this, right? Price in the first year, quantity in the second year, this is going to be, give me the, since I, <coughs> I'm sorry, fixed the prices, this is going to give me the growth rate of quantities, right? The real GDP growth rate. Now, here's a question. Can I also do this? Keep the quantities constant, let the prices change. Can I do this as well? 
Why not? I mean, four numbers, but I could do math, right? I know each one of these things. I know prices in the first year, quantities in the first year. I know prices in the second year. I already told you I know quantities in the first year. So I could calculate this. So there is no question that mechanically I could do the math. The real question is, would I learn something from doing this? I've kept the quantities, let the prices change. What did I learn? How much did the prices change? Do I not care about this? I do, and you should. Look, are the prices increasing quickly or slowly in our country? What does that mean? What is quickly? Are they increasing more quickly than they were increasing in 1995? Ah, maybe you should do these calculations so that you can answer that question. Okay, that's the answer to that question. If I fix the quantities, okay, what I'm, this is something that you see very rarely, okay, done over the GDP. But the idea is going to come up next week. This is essentially how you calculate inflation, okay. This is my production. How much does it cost to buy all of this production this year? How much does it cost to buy the same production next year? Since I'm buying the same things, if it costs more, it has to be the prices. It gives me a measure of how fast the prices are increasing. Okay? This calculation, this calculation, um, P2Q1 minus P1Q1 over P1Q1. The percentage increase in the price, okay? This thing is known as the GDP deflator. Does anyone know what this is in Turkish? You're going to be surprised. Deflator. <laughs> there is only one place where you would come across this. When the government is submitting the budget proposal to the parliament, okay, they say we're making the following assumptions about next year. The growth rate is going to be this, you know, such and such is going to happen, blah, blah is going to happen. One of them is this, okay. Once a year, you hear from the Minister of Finance. Büyüme varsayımımız carttır, enflasyon varsayımımız cürttür, deflatör varsayımımız şudur. That's the only place. But, so this is something very, of very little practical use. And we're going to talk about why this particular measure of inflation is rather useless next week when we talk about inflation. However, <clears throat> the idea is very useful, okay? Understanding that if you have prices and quantities for several years, you could use the trick of let's fix the prices, look at changes in real quantities, as well as the trick of let's fix the quantities and look at the changes in prices, okay? This gives you a measure of how much more expensive is it to buy the same GDP, right? That's exactly what this is. The same GDP, Q1, only the prices are different. How much more expensive is it? This much, okay? That's the GDP deflator. Now, there are a lot of little, little, little things about the calculation of GDP, all of which are in your book and you should read and know, okay? Things like, well, let me tell you one. The gross domestic product, we understand what the product is, right? We're trying to measure production. We understand what domestic is. We're trying to do this within our borders. What is gross? Okay, total, but, but more than that actually. Remember your machine that has a life of five years, okay? Did you use that machine to do the production? Did you spend essentially one-fifth of that machine, right? 
a fifth of the life of that machine is gone. Is that loss in the GDP? Not only did we do production, but we also lost something while doing the production. Did we take that out? No. That's why it's gross. Okay? That is called depreciation, which is in Turkish, Ashunma. Okay? Capital, the machines and the buildings you use for production depreciates because you do production, because you use them. Okay? So that production process, while it adds something, it also takes away something. Because we're not subtracting the depreciation, we're going to call that the gross domestic product. Could we take it out? Yes. We have estimates of the depreciation. Okay? Then it would no longer be gross. It would be net. Right? That's in your book. Then you can think of things like the following. Well, how much of this income, remember all these income? Right? How much of this income do people actually get to spend? This is the tax question. Okay? Now, taxes don't do anything to the GDP. Why? Because just like me selling you this board marker doesn't do anything to GDP if this was produced earlier, okay? I earned income, and then the government says, I'm going to take 20% of your income as taxes, okay? Does it change the fact that my income is my GDP contribution? It's just a reallocation of the income the government is taking from me. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, I mean, I care a lot, but for GDP calculation purposes, it's all the same. Okay? But for policy analysis, it's important. So we do ask questions like, okay, and this is going to be a very important phrase for us. What is disposable income? Harcanabilir gelir. Okay? Take the income, take, take the sum of these incomes, and take taxes out of that. Okay? How much do... Because we're going to ask, you know, look, this is the total income, okay? How much is it is turned into consumption, all right? Good question. But first you have to ask, how much is it can be turned into consumption? If the government takes, say, 40% of my income, okay? If 40% of this sum is spent by the government, at most 60% can be consumption. Right? You cannot expect 80% of GDP to be consumption because consumers, the people, right, no longer have control over that part of the GDP. Do you follow this? Right? So this is no longer the question of what is GDP. Okay? This is the question of who gets to use that GDP now. Okay? Is it the government? Is it the people who did the production? These are all important things. They are very simple concepts. So I want you to read your book and, and know these things. Right? What we're going to do next week is we're going to keep on talking about the fascinating topics. So next week is going to be employment, unemployment, which is, especially in Turkey, incredibly interesting, and inflation. Okay? Do your homeworks. Make sure that you're, um, yo, let me finish up, and then you can Pack and go, okay? Do your homeworks. Make sure that you're registered in Moodle, and make sure that you submit your homeworks via Turnitin in time, okay? And if you have any questions, ask your teaching assistants and ask me. Have a good week. See you. Next, we're asking the dual question, which is, if we produced the production must have generated income. Okay? Who got the income? Let's add, up, let's add the incomes up and get to the value of the production. <coughs> this functional distribution is something very useful to know. Okay? Here's what we're asking. Let's say, 
somebody. The gentleman in the blue shirt has a factory. What are you producing? Water. What? Water. Water. Okay. This is a good one, actually. It suits me fine. You're producing water, okay? Now, what do you need? How do you do production? And the rest is going to be your profit, okay? What is the distribution? So, you produced 100 liras worth of water, okay? This is your GDP contribution. Let's say this is the only thing that we produced. So Y is 100, okay? Are you paying rent? Yes, right. Sure. How much rent did you pay? Out of 100? Give me a hand here, okay? Let's say rent is 15, okay? You borrow from the bank, and you have to pay the bank with interest, okay? <coughs> you borrow 20, you pay, say, 25 back, okay? The net payment that you're making. Very good. So what we're trying to get at is the following. When we say investment, okay, investment is physical investment, new machines, new factories, okay, plus Changes in inventories, okay? <clears throat> These two things are separate, but we measure them under the same heading, okay? And that's GDP by expenditure. Next up is GDP by income. Now here we were saying, asking the question, what happens to our production, okay? How do we use it? Okay, so you, you need machines, that's easier. What else? <laughs> okay, this is the easy question, right? One, I'm going to assume you need water, right? It tends to come out of the ground somewhere, right? And you tend not to own the place, right? So you have to rent the water source, right? Okay. What else? Are you going to do the work yourself? All right. So you're going to hire people, okay? What else? You probably need machinery. Otherwise, a day may Right? You don't want to produce water and tell people, ah, yeah, you know, my hand goes all over the place and my feet goes all over the place, right? It's just, okay, you need machinery. Okay? Do you have the money to buy the machinery? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to borrow. Okay? And this is something important. Right. You need the land to do production on, and you have to rent it, and you have to pay rents for that. You need people to work for you, and you need to hire those people, and you have to pay them wages. You need machinery, okay? and you have to buy the machinery, and you have to borrow to buy the machinery. Okay? What do you bring? What do you do? You have the idea, okay? And you take the risk, and you get the reward for that, right? And this is exactly what we're going to ask. We're going to ask, once the water is produced, okay, the value of that water must go a little bit to the guy who owns the land, right? You're paying him. A little bit to the people who do the production, your workers, okay? How much does she get? A little bit to the people who lend to you so that you could do the production. You're going to pay interest on your borrowing. 